Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going over my Brass Barrel TKO. The stock rival knockout is a strange blaster. It has a capacity of one round and has a five step reload process. This makes it immediately obsolete compared to something like the Kronos, which has a capacity of five rounds and a much faster reload time. Its large size also makes it very difficult to use as an emergency blaster like the Jolt. It's almost as big as a hammer shot, so it's going to fit in a holster, but it's not going to fit in your pocket. The TKO is a knockout modification designed by Adrian on Thingiverse. It allows the knockout to fire up to four darts from an inline clip. Adrian's design used polycarbonate tubes as the barrel material, but I found them very difficult to source in Australia, especially during the quarantine. Instead, I used the EZ Brass Barrel by Some Dingus on Thingiverse. It is a 3D printed piece that a 1732nd brass tube slides into and it serves as a replacement for the polycarbonate tubes. This is what the 3D printed part looks like and the brass slides into it just like that. This was a failed print as it fell over at around the 60% mark so this section should be a bit longer. When printing this piece I recommend leaving it oriented as is and printing it with a raft to prevent it from toppling over. I used electrical tape to prevent the brass from falling out of the printed piece and I used more electrical tape to prevent the printed piece from falling out of the stock knockout breech. Internally this knockout is stock. All I did was dremel out the walls on the side of the breech that prevent it from sliding all the way forward and I removed this orange plastic piece because it prevents the TKO muzzle from fully locking in. I'll link Adrian's tutorial on how to build a TKO in the description below. However, in that video, Adrian cuts the extension spring that brings the knockout breech forward, but I didn't have to do that as mine extends forward just enough to fit half length darts. For performance, this is hitting around 120 FPS using FVJs. This is about the same as if it was using polycarbonate tubes, so the brass barrel doesn't seem to have any sort of advantage over them. The original goal for this build was to create a good sidearm with good performance that can still fire multiple darts before reloading. Originally, I ran an 8 dart hammer shot as a sidearm. This was decent, but it only had a range of about 7 meters and it had fairly low FPS. It's got a blaster tech spacer and a stock US spring on the inside, so it's got a fairly light prime. Its light prime and high capacity make it great for something like HVZ, but for humans versus humans like Sydney Nerf, this just didn't have enough power. The TKO is more suited for PvP games as it provides enough power to supplement my primary in a pinch. It's also great for when I need to scavenge darts mid-game. At Sydney Nerf's December 2020 event, my strife ran out of ammo during King of the Hill, and the TKO allowed me to stay in the game with a near primary worthy blaster by scavenging darts off the ground. Now I said primary worthy, and yes, I believe I could use this as a primary if I wanted to just run a dump pouch filled with darts. 120 FPS is pretty good for a blaster this size. For comparison, this is hitting harder than my Strife, and it's hitting almost as hard as my Prophecy. I'll be making an overview video of both this blaster and my Strife sometime in the future. This entire build costed around 41 Australian dollars, not including the 3D printer costs. More than half of that amount is just on the base knockout itself. If you live somewhere where you can buy a knockout locally, this build would probably be even cheaper. I also have this 3D printed sight that just slides onto the rival rail. It's mainly there for cosmetic reasons, but it also helps to prevent the blaster from sliding out of my holster. Now let's go outside for a firing demo.
As you might have noticed from the firing demo, my TKO only has a capacity of 3 rounds, while Adrian's TKO has a capacity of 4. I'm not sure why mine is like that, but it could potentially be due to the Easy Brass Barrel having different dimensions to Adrian's polycarbonate tubes. The reliability of this blaster can also definitely be improved. This is the first time I've made a brass barrel, and sometimes darts can get stuck halfway through it, or they don't enter the brass properly when firing. This can usually be solved by flicking the blaster downwards to get the dart seated in the brass properly. Overall, I'm very happy with this build and I recommend anyone looking for a sidearm to consider making a TKO, whether with brass or polycarbonate. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.